Greetings, this is September 3rd at 5 p.m. We are waiting to see what happens after the afternoon peak winds are finished. I'm taking a look at an overview of our corner of the world. This is the province of British Columbia looking from the southeast to the northwest and you can see extensive activity going on right now and if you take a look towards the top of your screen, that's the Hansville Risky Creek and uh, the fires up around Nazco. There's not a lot of new six hour red hotspots. So there are, is cloud cover up there. They've had some precipitation, so that may be obscuring the latest infrared. A fire that is displaying a lot of new six hour infrared is the Peachland Fire on Meadow Valley Road. Uh, this is north of Garnet Lake, and here we can see an angle looking northwards. We see Garnet in the middle, and we see Okanagan Lake on the right-hand portion of your screen, and the Okanagan Hills to the left-hand side. We can zoom in to Garnet Lake, Meadow Valley Road, and you can see that there are outlying farms and uh, homesteading in this area. Uh, this will be a major concern for wildfire crews protecting those properties and isolating them from the firehead. I'd also like to take a look at Cathedral Lakes. This is south east of Manning Park and it's crossed the line from the United States into British Columbia and if you notice in this overview the pattern of new six-hour infrared is very similar to the pattern of new six hour infrared around Sheridan Lake. Uh, this is this north wind that's come in and it's blowing new activity to the southeast. We can see a few of these hot spots that are on the northern fringes of this fire front in Canada. And with this imagery, we can see the terrain and we can see the fire has concentrated in forested pockets in valleys and along the mountainsides. Crews working on the ground and in the air have incredible challenges that they have to face in this type of area. We are now looking at an overview of the Elephant Hill fire from a position in the southeast looking towards the northwest at the top of your screen. And this gives us an idea of the terrain, the plateaus, where the river valleys are, and we can see the marble range in the upper left hand portion we can see bonaparte in the lower right hand portion and the fires tend to move faster on these plateau areas than they do in the mountainous regions like cathedral lakes uh, this fire the elephant hill has leapt forward by kilometers in very brief periods of time. Let's zoom into the northern flank and here we see similar behavior where new infrared is being pushed over to the east and now the southeast with the, the effect of this northern wind that's come in overnight. So I do have concerns for areas south of Crystal Lake and along the north Bonaparte there are large forested pockets but hopefully with this north wind it's kind of blowing most of the fire back in on itself and we want to check uh, the BC wildfire mapping the perimeter mapping and for the alerts uh, in case this fire moves fast uh, right now it appears that they're doing an awesome job holding it in specific contained pockets However, those red areas are showing a lot of volatility. Let's just take a look at a few more areas and then we'll come back and look at the radiative scans. Hutchison is showing a lot more orange 12 hour. Uh, they were showing a lot of red this morning. There is some activity just north of the lake. I see it one new red six hour and of course four kilometers to the northeast is still quite active there. However, I'm not seeing a lot of growth outwards and that's good. Things are stabilizing there. Let's move over to Young Lake and I am still seeing those three hot spots, both two on the south, one on the north. Not a lot of change in this area. It seems to be holding in position with no expansion. 
And of course, depending on cloud cover, smoke in the area, it may be altering the infrared that is visible to us on this system. Moving further south to High Hiem, I'm not seeing growth in those red new areas. There is that fire pocket towards top center of your screen. It's about four kilometers east of Loon Lake. It may be displaying a couple new hotspots on the southern end of that fire pocket, but growth seems to have stabilized on all of these flanks. Uh, we're just seeing a lot of volatility in new areas, perhaps swept up by the wind, but I'm not seeing outlying sparks being thrown in any direction. There is that one small outlier uh, south of Loon Lake. It's about center of your screen right now. And watching that one, it could and very well probably be a flare-up that's occurred due to these winds. Uh, the air's got into some embers and made it hot enough to display on infrared. So looking at an overview of the northern flank again, uh, here we can clearly see the behavior of this fire based on those recent wind patterns pushing everything to the east and the southeast and the new activity that is on the northern flank of the fire could be a combination of those fringe edges that were hot yesterday now being pushed back in on themselves and crews may be doing strategic uh, burning or applying a control strategy in that area to minimize fuel in case the wind shift and come from the south. And of course, one of the liberties I have uh, doing this as uh, just a concerned individual is I can make a lot of interpretive analysis. So uh, you want to check with the official alerts and bulletins. They have the eyes on the ground, the eyes in the air, and all the resources to determine where this firehead is likely to travel. Let's take a look now at the VIRS system and their radiative power suite. We are looking at where the most intensity is and we can see the scale at the top of the screen and kind of correlate that with where we think most of the heat and the new activity is. The first thing I notice is it's not as hot as I would expect it to be. It's actually showing a fair bit of cooling. Maybe it's burning out some fuel. It may be that this data isn't reflecting the most recent uh, activity that we are seeing on the infrared. I got this scan at 1.30 p.m. and of course during an active wildfire you want to check back regularly. So these Google KML VIRS system links are below in the description so please do check them out uh, you just go to the RC RSAC uh, choose VIRS Canada and I'm using the radiative power indications just click on the configuration that you want and Google Earth automatically loads up and it puts you somewhere in the center of Canada so if you just grab it and move it over to the area of your concern and you're ready to go. We are looking at the central region, Loon Lake, Young Lake, and High Hiem. Loon Lake is about the middle of your screen, and I am seeing some of that radiative intensity at High Hiem, and this is sort of in the center of the major fire pocket, but the outside edges, the fringes, do look blue, purple, and lower intensity. Let's switch now and look at the fire close to Peachland, uh, at Meadow Valley Road and just to the lower right of center you can see one green spot and when I click on that we can see when the spot was detected and how many megawatts it is and this one is showing over 191 megawatts so this is information that was picked up by a satellite and compared with the surrounding area and the reliability is questionable and there'll be some reading material in the links below. But we can use this and take the data for what it's worth and see if it correlates with what we're seeing on infrared, the wind, and the fire behavior. We are now looking at Cathedral Lakes. This fire is showing a lot more intensity. We see a lot of the red, uh, the light green, uh, moving into the yellow, 
This is at the higher end of the scale, and we can see the pockets where there's uh, furious behavior right now. And if I click on the center red dot, I am seeing 1,290 megawatts for that specific hotspot. I'd like to share a quick theory I have on that. Because of the angle of the mountainside, the slope, we're actually seeing more surface area in one single hotspot. So we're seeing the intensity looking at an angle and uh, perhaps a larger grouping of heat and um, megawatts than we would see if it was on a flat plane. Let's switch over to windy now. I'm seeing 14 kilometers an hour coming from the north northwest and it should begin to slow down and stay consistently from the northwest. Uh, no real change anticipated till Tuesday. We could start seeing some variation and the temperature is hot, hot. It could go up past 30 uh, for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and potentially even Friday. Is there a chance for rain? Uh, unfortunately, it's just to the north and this may dissipate. I'm seeing no precipitation in the forecast until potentially Friday when we've got some it looks like intense cloud cover that may be rolling in. Hopefully we are getting a benefit of some cooler northern breezes due to that cloud cover uh, north of 100 mile house. I'm going to switch over to Dry BC and take a quick look at the Callan Highway Cam. Uh, this is looking south towards Summerland from Peachland and on your left hand side of the screen a lot of smoke. Uh, it's just hovering over the Okanagan Lake right now. And if we move to Kamloops, I'm looking westwards towards Savona. A lot of smoke there. Looking up at Sheridan, I can see some blue sky trying to peek through. I see some of those clouds that have rolled down from the north. And uh, if we move over to the Begbie Cam, we are seeing that overcast intermingled with the blue. And there appears to be a lot of haze in the horizon. Uh, towards 100 mile house. If you are looking for a place with a break from the haze and the smoke and you want some fresh air and do a little hiking, do a little geology, I would recommend Tumbler Ridge. It's a beautiful day there right now. So immediately after I finish this update, I'm going to go and check and see if there's been any fire movement because we are in an active wildfire situation and it happens so rapidly. Uh, this is out of date minutes after I create it, so that's why I do them so often. It changes rapidly, so be prepared, uh, analyze the fire behavior, look at the wind, know your position, and know your escape routes. And if you're east and north of that fire flank, uh, be very aware. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll be back as soon as I have new information.